Todd, this is the second in the series uh, today, and um, certainly got, glad to have Joey on board. I, and I dug your team. It's great. And, and for everybody getting on this call, we did. We got introduced virtually you know, through, um, through a couple of internal trainings that we all did um, with Joey's team and uh, felt really good about it. You know, there's a couple things that we were able to, you know, even from Snap One Partner Stores, we were able to bring in a couple lines late in the game. Not late in the game, but I just, they came about. Right. And however long those were in, uh, you know, inception and, and getting, you know, for prime ready for prime time. But it happened pretty quickly for the stores. Yes. Which I'm certainly glad about. And so are these guys. You know, a lot of the time it's like we hear a lot on the counter, as I've told you. Sure. They'll be like, hey, you guys got to check into LEA or you got to check into something, you know, and, and they've seen it out there. They think it's a perfect scenario to get it into distro. Right. Yeah. And it will just make their world better. So um, this is one of those examples where um, the I just think that the, everybody came in together at the same time, got our campaigns together, got the marketing together, got the product together. You guys were ready to rock and roll. I mean, it's a lot of stores, 40 stores across the country that you got to put product into. And um, But no, it's great exposure for you. And now I think we're all ready to play forward together. Oh, well, we're super excited about it too. And uh, I, th I think it's going to be great. You know, we, uh, we just got uh, most of the stores stocked up and, you know, it's a fun product to sell too. You guys will see that today in, in the training and uh, it just, it, it gets you pumped up. And uh, honestly, it's, it's as smart of an amp as you want it to be, or it can also be, uh, we don't like to say it, but a dumb amp too. If that's, you know, if that's the case, if, if all they want is an amplifier at the end of the day, it can do both. So. Well, we, you know, even in that context, um, dumb, uh, we know that there's a sound quality to all of this. There's a, there, and I don't mean just sonic, but the word quality too. Yes. And that connotates into us like, hey, th that brick, if you will, that's going to be there. It's going to be sounding awesome power. That means to an audio context, there's a waveform, an invisible waveform that we go with that and just know that those racks are, are glowing. They're they're rocking and they sound great to pump them. I love when yes. we're talking about appropriating power to different things. And it just starts to get your mind going like, man, I can I could go back to this job, for instance, and I can implement this and make it sound a hundred percent better. And when our partners have that confidence or their wheels are spinning on a redesign, if you will, cause it's not always about the money. It's almost about, yeah. I can go back there and, you know, really make this thing blossom. And so right. when we've got the right products that, that can do that, or maybe, maybe something before wasn't, um, <clears throat> wasn't feature laden enough. And now yeah. it is, and we yeah. can go back and, and do an, do an additional install. All right. Ernst and Eric, Drew, Cody, Jeff, Peter, Tom, it's good to see everybody on here. It is nine o'clock straight up, and that is on the West Coast because my man Joey already had lunch, right? <laughs> um, we are across the country today. This is open to all our partners, all the Snap One Partner Stores. We do this each and every Wednesday. I'm really glad about um, this whole line that we have. LEA, I'm really excited about it. You're seeing it in the stores. Um, today's an hour dive into... Um, into the into into the product line. Joey's fantastic. He's an engineer himself, and uh, we've gotten to know each other pretty well. I hope to be able to get this thing on the road and and you know get some touchy feely, get you know get some uh, trainings actually in in our location. So I know you're in Indiana. Maybe we'll. Uh, it usually goes along with the campaign that we try to put some together. Um, some some things like that. But you know, if we ever did that. What would we blast? What, how, would, how would that work? I mean, yes, we could go through feature sets and everything else, but we got to try to turn on some stuff and make some stuff happen, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our live demo is really cool, as you've already seen, Gary. And uh, I think that's the important part is showing them how easy it is to use. And then also, you know, touching on the remote management capabilities, which I know is also, you know, a big, a big topic within Snap One as well with the oversee platform. So absolutely you know, how we can how we can work together with the ecosystems is is huge. It's a win-win as a full solution. So well, we talked about, you know, RMR in the last conversation in a sense where um you know, when you're managing a, a roster full of clients as these guys are, that's our world. So, you know, anything that plays well with that, but also how we approach this isn't the dialogue today that we're really having, but RMR in a sense of it's always worth um, a, a dollar value, um, a, a, a long term commitment to that customer going forward when that's part of the play on your roster. So and I think this fits in great. Um, yes. All right. want to just give a shout out to Carrie. Thank you, man. How you doing? I hope all is well. All right. I'm going to clear these questions out here. I see you guys already using the Q&A feature. Let's do this today. We've got an hour. We're going to get to work. I want some Q&A. If you guys know nothing about this line, that's fantastic. Let's start there. I can hear some dialogue in the background. Is that you, Joey? Is everybody uh, it, muted? 
It might be. I, I apologize. There's some talking going on in the background here. So well, then, don't, then get them on camera, and we're going to ask them some questions because we're, right, we're let's go. It's a it's a Snap One Partner Store forum right here. <laughs> I um, love it. All right, so I am recording this, guys. Um, we had a great session earlier today. This is an hour long. I'm going to get everybody who registered. Remember, if one of your teammates registered earlier and couldn't join this um, uh, live, then I'm going to get this into their inbox. They're going to have the slide deck. They're going to have this recording. And we're ready to go. Joey, thank you so much for all your time and efforts. And uh, let's get to work. Let's introduce LEA to our Snap1 partner stores. Hey, well, thank you so much, Gary. Really excited about it. Uh, as, as most of you know, we just kicked off the partnership here. Uh, not too long ago, and uh, we've, we've got some stock within most of your branch locations now, uh, more to some of your other warehouses. So we're just really excited to be partnered with Snap One. Uh, I think there's a, a ton of opportunity in the products and, and in the full solution too that Snap One offers that, that these can be uh, branded with. So uh, we're just very excited. I wanted to, to take a little bit of time and share more about the company, uh, and then we'll dive into the products, which is the fun part. So um, as Gary mentioned, please feel free to uh, shoot us questions in the chat box or even interrupt me. I don't mind either way. Uh, we'll definitely get those answered for you. And uh, like I said, maybe you'll maybe you'll even stump me on one or two of them. So with that, uh, I'm going to share a few slides. We will try not to kill you with too much PowerPoint today, I promise. Um, so first and foremost, just to, to give a little bit more on the backstory of LEA, of course, now proudly offered by Snap1. Um, so we had a little bit of fun when we designed the company. Uh, most of us, uh, as a name that you might see familiar, uh, is Crown Audio. So most of us came from Crown Audio. That's really our heritage inside the industry. And uh, um, so with that, kind of the backstory that put the company together, we started in 2019. So we're a relatively new company, but we are not new as people. Uh, we, we do have our shark fin logo, as you can see up on the slide here. So our founder and CEO, Blake Oxberger is an avid sport fisherman. So that's where our shark fin logo comes from. Uh, we actually went as far too. So LEA uh, stands for loud enough audio and we spell enough the improper way, which is E-N-U-F-F -F, because why not? And yeah, we like to have fun with it. Uh, a lot of people call us Leah or Leia. You know, it really doesn't matter to us. We, we do pronounce it LEA. Um, we, today we're gonna show you some amplifiers, uh, but keep in mind that we really are a technology driven company. Um, so yes, we do build amplifiers at the end of the day, but we are uh, very much focused on the software side of things as Gary and I were hinting to early on. And so, you know, with that, I, I just want to you know, mention that, you know, we, we do try to really strive for perfect sound reinforcement, and that is through our amplifier technology and our world-class support that we have. I will say too, we're not just another amplifier company, and that's really where the technology side comes in. You know, having things like our cloud platform that we'll talk about with RMR opportunities there, uh, and then too, just the way that we do business. So we really thrive off from three differentiators. Uh, one is the LEA who, that's the people. Uh, secondly is the LEA what, and that is the product we'll show you today. Uh, and then lastly is just how we do business as a company. We call that the LEA way. Again, we're all about simplicity. We like to have fun. And we, we want to support you. And uh, I will tell you, you know, we're, we're very responsive too. So if you have any questions as you're out doing demos in front of customers or you know, they have questions, please reach out. We, we'd love to, to get you those answers as uh, quickly as we possibly can for you. So you know, with that, I will mention. So uh, again, most of us did come from Crown Audio. I'll put up uh, some of the possible familiar faces here. Uh, and uh, I do want to mention, so Blake Oxberger, our founder and CEO, you can see him at the top. Uh, Blake was brought into the industry back in the year 2000. So Blake started at Crown Audio in the year 2000. He, he was president for six years, took it from about 50 million to 100 million, and then was promoted to executive vice president and president of Harmon Pro. Uh, ran that division for the next 10 years, uh, grew it from about $500 million into $1.1 billion organization in 2016, and decided that uh, he wanted to retire and try something a little bit different. So uh, Blake departed Harmon in 2016, of course, doing plenty of sport fishing. And as many of you may know, then in 2017, Harmon was acquired by Samsung. So the acquisition led to a pretty large restructuring. Uh, I myself was based in the Crown Audio location, which is in Elkhart, Indiana. Um, by the way, one thing I didn't touch on, uh, so I'm calling you from South Bend, Indiana. Uh, you can probably see behind me, so these big concrete pillars over my shoulder. Uh, we are in, if anyone's 
uh, big into automobiles were in the old Studebaker manufacturing facility. So uh, it's now a technology hub inside of our Renaissance district in downtown South Bend. Uh, really, really neat building. Uh, we actually are expanding our office space right now. In fact, our, our new offices, I think, will be open in the next couple of weeks uh, just because we've been growing so quickly as a company. So it's really excited, exciting time to be part of it, um, which takes me back to, so, so basically what had happened with the Samsung acquisition is by June of 2018, the Elkhart, Indiana Crown location was shut down. Um, reason for that is, is they moved all of engineering to Shenzhen, China, and then all of manufacturing to Mexico. So Blake, as he was seeing this unfold in partial retirement at the time, decided, hey, you know, this is really a, a perfect opportunity to start from the ground floor. So in January of 2019, Blake launched LEA, went in, hired up the team you see here, as well as a, a team of our top crown engineers, and we started our initial amplifier design. Um, we were a startup at the time. You know, we didn't have any product that we were shipping. Now we have progressed into a very major player in the industry. We're a multi-million dollar company. As a matter of fact, we're in our fourth year of business now. Uh, basically, every year we've doubled or more than doubled our business. And actually, some quarters, uh, we've doubled our business as well. So um, we're in growth mode. We we're continuing to expand. Uh, I will say, too, you know, we we couldn't do it all by ourselves either. Uh, one of the most important parts of the team is this team right here, and that is our engineering team. You know, we have every walk of life when you look at what it takes to build an amplifier and DSP, uh, as well as our mechanic, mechanical engineers, uh, our testing engineer, Brenda. You know, this, this team is really the backbone of the company. So I think it's very important to, to talk about them. Uh, they have an average of 16-year tenure building and designing ampl amplification and hardcore uh, DSP design. So um, just an outstanding team, and uh, you know they they sh they've created the products that you're going to see today. The other part of that part of that that I will mention as well is so you know we could not do this all by ourselves. Um, with that, you do see some partners up here on this slide. By the way, there's a uh, nice picture here of our offices. You can see kind of the main lobby here with those big concrete pillars and the Studebaker manufacturing facility. Uh, again, just a really, really iconic place in downtown South Bend. Um, but the reason I show this slide is we have a partner called Zollner Electronics. Uh, so Zollner is a German-renowned manufacturing partner. Uh, they actually build automotive, aerospace, medical, and of course now amplifiers, which by the way, we've grown so much that uh, I understand we are now their largest line or lines, I should say, in the manufacturing facility. Uh, so even though they're German, we actually manufacture in Costa Rica. And there's a few reasons we do that. And one, it's a trade-free, duty-free relationship between the U.S. and Costa Rica. Um, secondly, being in the same hemisphere, it makes it much easier logistically to bring products in. So and most of the times it takes multiple weeks to bring products in. We typically have those arriving in our warehouse uh, within days. And then, of course, those are shipped out to Snap One, where you stock all that inventory. Uh, additionally, uh, the other great part about that is it is TAA compliant. So uh, if any of you get into any type of government install uh, opportunities, our product uh, holds that compliance, no problem at all. So um, with that, you know, we've, we've been able to grow and scale the business. We actually added another production line this year at Zollner in our manufacturing facility. So um, we're cranking out several hundred amplifiers each and every week, and, and that continues to grow as we grow. Okay, so enough about us. Now let's talk more about the product because that really is the fun part here. So what we're going to look at today is our Connect Series amplifiers. And I really, I like to call this the Swiss Army knife of amps because it's such a very easily integratable product. At the end of the day, we make an amplifier, so it has to be easily integratable. Um, but I will say too, we make a very differentiated product. So and when you look at this slide, yes, of course, you can see the, the Connect Series amplifiers down here in the middle, um, but we have a ton of software that really helps to deploy these solutions. So first and foremost, when we launched the company, uh, we launched our web UI. And the great thing about the web UI is that everything is browser-based, so there's no apps you have to go out and download. Uh, you just launch it by typing in an IP address. From there, you can go in, set up, configure, and control the amplifier. Well, of course... And like Snap One, we saw the opportunity to introduce a cloud platform. And so uh, we brought on Amazon Web Services or AWS IoT Core. 
And with that, it allows us the ability to go in and remotely manage, troubleshoot, control, uh, just be that expert at a distance. And the best part about this is, yes, it is backed on AWS, um, but it's totally free. So the integrator is not charged any monthly subscription costs or anything like that. Uh, however, it gives them the advantage to go out and, as Gary and I were talking about, sell the RMR, uh, you know, remote managed services and, and whatever they might do for their customers. Uh, and then, of course, too, we have APIs are very easily integratable uh, into many control systems. We'll talk more about those in a few minutes, as well as speaker tunings. Uh, we have a wide variety, about 27 or 28 different brands of speaker tunings that we offer. Uh, and we just recently launched our newest software platform, uh, Sharkware. And so Sharkware, when you look at that, it's, a, it's another opportunity to go out and as the installs become larger, uh, there's an offline design mode, which so you can actually build the amps and build the racks all together, push the file once you get onto uh, the job site, and it gives you a lot of other really cool functionality like grouping, um, user access control, and uh, visual EQ inside of Sharkware. So the product itself, the Connect series, uh, I'm going to stop sharing for just a couple of minutes. Again, I told you I wouldn't kill you with too much PowerPoint. So I'm going to give you as close to real life as we can get today. Uh, this is what we call our Connect series amplifiers. So um, this is our Connect 704. So this is 700 watts per channel, and it's a four channel amp. And this happens to be our Dante model. Uh, so just a couple of things to point out. Uh, with our current Connect series, everything up through this 700 watt per channel model, everything fits in the 1RU form factor. So very slim, very sleek. Also, too, as you can see, if I bring it a little bit closer to the camera, there's no knobs or buttons on the front panel. That's, of course, intentional because these are a smart amplifier and everything is software driven. So uh, you'll go in and set it up and control it through the web UI, the cloud or through Sharkware. Uh, and also, too, you do have two removable magnetic grills on either side. So you can actually take and pry gently with a credit card or a screwdriver on the outside edge here. It'll pop the grills off. And then the filters are actually housed on the back side of the grill. You can just pull them out and wash them for very easy filter cleaning. So these are an install oriented amplifier. So, of course, they are made to be mounted in a rack. Uh, one thing I'll point out in a 1RU, uh, we've got compacted a lot in there. Uh, so the depth is only 14 and a quarter inches deep. So 16 inch cabinets are no problem at all to fit our amplifiers in. And then of course, for those that may be curious, I'll show you what the internals look like here. So by the way, very good looking board layout design. Uh, it is all class D amplifier. So with that, see our engineers even had a little bit of fun. I don't know if I can get it close enough, but you might be able to see there's even a little shark bite that's taken out of the board. Yeah, it's just those very fine details that our engineers really expressed uh, during the initial design phase. Uh, the other neat thing too, I'll point out, so there's a, of course a lot going on here on the board. Uh, we do have three cooling fans down here right behind the front panel. And so we pull air in through the front and push it out through the back of our amps. So what that does is it allows us to take and stack them right on top of one another. You don't have to worry about any overheating or cooling issues at all. Uh, there's plenty of venting front to back and they can be stacked tight right on top of one another. Okay, so, you know, our amps go in a variety of installs. Um, when we launched the company, we had a, a very much focus on the commercial install market. So um, that's where I would say primarily most of our business does, does play, but we've grown. And since us growing, we've really focused more on the residential space. So a couple of things we've done there. Uh, first and foremost, we have a balanced input on all of our amplifiers. So each channel has its own dedicated balanced input on it. Well, that doesn't always work the best when you're trying to hook up to consumer grade devices. So one thing that we've done, we do have these adapters right here. This is a Amphenol AnyTech, which is just our, our balanced three pin connector on the back to a female RCA cable. So the great part about that is, is you can grab any type of length RCA cable you need, plug it in, we sell these in a pack of two, and it makes it very, very simple so you don't have to go out and you know cut ends off and, and wire those up. Uh, most of the Snap-1 branches have actually already stocked up on these, so these are should be readily available in your local branch. Uh, same thing too, you know, when you look at more of the commercial side of things, 
so we do also have a XLR adapter as well. So same thing, this is just our Amphenol AnyTech input connector to our XLR. And so again, gives you full functionality. Maybe you're doing something more, you know, tour sound or live sound um, and you need some XLRs, no problem. There's your go-to as well for that. Again, these are sold as an accessory. Okay. Um, by the way, one thing I should mention too, you know, the other neat thing about our amps is they're so flexible that they don't have to be mounted in a rack. Uh, I will point out, I've actually have one of our front rack gears right here to the amplifiers. So, you know, say you're doing an install where you want to mount it under a tabletop or even on a wall behind you. Well, all that you do is take and rotate these rack gears up or down 90 degrees, and you can mount our amps in just about any location. We've even seen them mounted on the bottom of a tiki hut in Florida. Don't know that I recommend it, but, you know, they, they go just about anywhere. So, okay, um, I'm going to pivot back over. Gary, are you seeing any questions so far in the chat? Guys, we're clear, but uh, I have some experts who are our audience members, so I expect some good questions, guys. Let's let's be interactive if we can. But other than that, let's uh, roll forward, buddy. Hey, sounds great. OK, well, let's uh, let's jump back into a couple more slides. I want to take everyone through kind of the overall lineup. So uh, we do have our Connect series. We have essentially two different variants, if you will. We have our Dante Connect models as well as our Network Connect models. So the Dante models you'll see up at the top and the blue or teal or turquoise, whatever color you want to call that. The network models are at the bottom. So the only difference when you look at the Dante models, you have a D that denotes Dante on the model number. And they're also Dante and AES 67. So uh, if you don't need that, the standard network models are just analog inputs. Uh, we call them network because they're control and monitored, of course, on a network. So that's why we call it that. Um, but with that, so just to look at the breakout. So we start out at 80 watts a channel. We have both four and eight channel models. We then move into 160 watt per channel by four and eight channel models. We have 350 watt by two and four channel models and 700 watt by two and four channel models. So that one RU that I just showed you, uh, all of these models up through the 704 fit into that one RU chassis. And then we just started shipping our high powered 1504 and 1504D. So those are a 2U model. Uh, all of our amps do have onboard DSP, which we're gonna talk about here in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, the 1504 does have some uh, more advanced DSP like FIR filtering that's built into that model. But I do wanna mention to you that, you know, again, we've back to simplicity, we've tried to make sure that everything is very simplistic and that's down to our model numbers. So. You know, when you look at, say, the Connect 354D, the 35 stands for 350 watts, 4 stands for 4 channel, and D stands for Dante. And that's how the nomenclature goes throughout the entire series. Uh, additionally, too, I want to point out in this chart that our amps are a 70-volt amp as well as a low-Z amplifier. So you might get caught up on an install where you, know, you have a variety of how your lines are going to be wired up. So you might have a 70 volt line on one channel, but then you might have an eight ohm driver that you need to drive on another channel. No problem. Our amps are fully configurable per channel. So again, if you're using this 354D, uh, channel one, you can run 70 volt. Channel two, you could run eight ohm. Channel three, you could run 70 volt. Channel four, you could run four ohm or whatever configuration you want. You just tell the amplifier how you want that to run. Okay. So as we progress, you know, I do want to mention that these are, quote unquote, a smart amplifier. And so they do, of course, live on a network. And we have three different ways that we can put the amps on a network. One is a standard wire connection, so a Cat5 or Cat6 option. Secondly, you, if you look at the bottom, you can hook the amps up to the existing venue Wi-Fi. Or let's say today, by chance, you don't have either one of those. So we have a third option where we have a built-in access point. Basically, there's a button on the back of the amp right next to the Ethernet port. You take and press that button, and then the amplifier will essentially hotspot itself. So what happens then is you have a one-to-one -one relationship where you can go in with your phone, tablet, PC, MacBook, whatever you have. You connect it to the access point, type in the IP address in your web browser, and then you can go in, set up, and configure and control that amplifier without having to try to hop on a network that you don't have a password to or 
you know, maybe the integrators in the back corner of their warehouse where they do all their burn in and the Wi-Fi is kind of spotty. Well, the access point is a perfect solution for that. And then they can pop it back over onto the network once they're all set up and ready to go. So again, it's all about flexibility. Uh, we can disable the access point too. We'll, I'll show you how to do that once we get into the demo of the web UI. Okay, so to break down the feature set a little bit more, you know, we, we do like to say, again, as you've heard me already say it, it is the Swiss Army knife of amps. So uh, on the feature set side, we have a universal switch mode power supply. So we actually operate anywhere in the world. We operate anywhere from 85 volts all the way up to 277 volts AC. So in layman's terms, you just grab a proper power cord and you plug it in and it works. <laughs> Uh, additionally, too, one thing that I'll mention, probably one of my favorite features, is what we have called Smart Power Bridge. So this is a proprietary feature to LEA. And so what we have the ability to do with Smart Power Bridge is I'm sure a lot of you are used to traditional bridge or bridge mono, where you can take channel one and two, you tie those channels together, and then you double your power output. So with Smart Power Bridge, we actually have the ability through the software where all that we do is we go in and click a button and it will actually take and double the power on whatever channel I select. So let's put this into context. So let's say I have our Connect 354. So again, 350 watts by four channel. And today, maybe I'm doing a restaurant slash bar. So inside of the restaurant bar, I've got four different zones. So the first zone might be your dining room zone. That's 70 volt. Second zone uh, might be the bar zone. The third zone, maybe we have a subwoofer because uh, later at night, it turns more into the bar or nightclub scene. So I have a subwoofer on the third zone. And then the fourth zone is another zone patio zone outside. Well, the bar or the sub, which is on zone three, may not be quite enough power being a 350 watt per channel amplifier to drive that subwoofer. So with Smart Power Bridge, all that I do is I go into the software, I click a button for channel three, it will then double the power, so it goes from 350 to 700 watts. But unlike a traditional bridging application, you don't sacrifice any other channel, the amplifier. So I'm sure most of you are thinking, how? Yeah, that just doesn't make sense. Um, kind of the, the way that we do that is we have an oversized power supply. So think about it as having extra overhead on demand. And so when you want to, anytime you just click a button and you can do any single channel of the amplifier and you'll double the power on that channel without sacrificing. Uh, we say just to get a little bit more technical that uh, you'll see at least 85% or better power on the other channels, no matter if it's a two channel, four channel or eight channel amplifier. So you're still going to see very close to full power on any of the other channels when Smart Power Bridge is engaged. Um, and I'll pause there real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll check the chat just to see if there's any questions on that. And I'm, I'm happy to go into more detail if anyone has questions. Yeah, that was where we had probably the most dialogue when that started to sink in. Anybody there? Um, hopefully this page is, is pretty important there and, and how it affects the other channels there, but an awesome feature for LEA. We're Absolutely. Clear though. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I will expand just uh, slightly on that too. So one other uh, thing that's pretty neat is with Smart Power Bridge. So on the 1504, which is of course this 2U model that you see right here, um, that you actually have two channels of Smart Power Bridge mode now. So that can be a 3000 watt by two. Um, that doesn't follow the same suit of 85% power. You'll get like six or 700 watts on the other two channels. Um, but it gives you the ability to really power some really big subs or zones and still have some power on the other two channels as well. Okay, I see a, uh, see a question popped up. So Tom has a question. Uh, Tom's question was, I assume that can only be used on one channel per ramp. Uh, that's a great question, Tom. Uh, yes, so, so the easy way, the, the cheat way that I think about it is if it's a 1U model, you get one smart power bridge channel. If it's a 2U model, you get two smart power bridge channels. So that would be correct. So anything from 80 watts up to our 700 watt per channel models is one channel. And then the 1504, which is the 2U model, you get two channels of. It's a great question. Okay. Yeah, keep them coming. 
So the other part that I want to mention too is, you know, again, our amplifiers, we, we like to say, especially I like to say it's the best looking piece of gear you're, you're ever going to put in a closet, but how do they sound? And that's probably the most important part of it. They have to not only look good, but they have to sound good too. So with that, we do use 96 kilohertz processing throughout on all of our amplifiers. We have a full onboard DSP suite that has less than a millisecond of latency. Uh, and we use advanced power factor correction. You'll see it here on the slide called advanced PFC for short. Basically what that does is it cuts down on the unwanted harmonic distortion. So when you take a look at our spec sheet, you get a very low THD value as well on your spec sheet. So you get the best of both worlds, efficiency and sound quality in our amplifiers. Okay, so the DSP side of things, I'm actually gonna skip over. We'll go through a lot of that as we get into the demo of the web UI in the cloud. Uh, you'll start to see kind of how that unfolds. So on the flip side you know, as APIs, I'm not sure if anyone on this call has ever heard of, you know, a company called Control4 by chance. Um, we, uh, we actually have a dedicated API for Control4, uh, and we support a variety of other manufacturers as well. Uh, so this is uh, a partial list. We actually have added, I think, two new drivers since this uh, slide was created. Uh, we also have on top of all these like Control 4, QSIS, Crestron, Extron, Atlona, Utology, RTI. Uh, I think we added uh, uh, URC is one of the newest. And then I can't remember the, the other driver. But the good thing about that is, is again, you know, when you think about integrating our amps into the solution that your customer is needing, we're so easily integratable between these dedicated APIs, as well as our open APIs, we communicate via TCP IP or WebSockets. And all of these are available for free download on our website, including the own open APIs as well, if you choose to write your own strings. So same thing on the flip side. Uh, I also wanna point out that, you know, again, we build an amp and what good is an amp without speakers? So that's where our speaker tunings come into play. Uh, again, this slide is a little bit dated. We now have over 3,000 tunings across 27 or 28 different brands. Uh, we have a good variety of the Snap-on speaker tunings already in our library. So uh, it's so simple to go in and download that. And then I'm actually going to show you next in the demo how easy it is to import those tunings. Uh, but this makes it uh, in the matter of a couple of seconds on importing those. So it sets your base curve for you. And you really have to worry about very little with these speaker tunings. Okay, so with that, so I think it's a great time to switch over and move into the demo. So uh, <clears throat> I actually have, I was, uh, I was on, I'm on the Snap One website. And so it's really, really simple. Okay, I think we have another question. Let me check this real quick. Okay, from Tom. Uh, so Tom asked uh, if, you if we have episode and triad speaker tunings. Uh, so Tom, we do have a, a select number of them. Uh, we don't have all of them. I know that's something that's been a work in progress. Um, I should also point out too that if you see, uh, and we'll show you what we have uh, once we import one of these, if you see something that we don't have, um, we are always taking uh, speaker requests and we are happy to keep incorporating those into our library. Um, our library continues to evolve each and every month. Yeah, I was going to ask, other than episode, if Triad was in there. Um, but yeah, let's check that out. That would be interesting to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So so with that, uh, the way that we get in and, and we start looking at those tunings. Um, so again, I'm on the, the Snap One website. And all that I do is my amplifier is connected to the same LEA network, because of course I'm here at head, headquarters. And so... What I'll do is I just take and on the front panel, there's an IP address. So I take and type that in to my browser. So mine is 10.8.2.169 and I hit enter. And from there you can see it then loads up our web UI. So one of the neat things here about the web UI, of course, you've got your left hand pane, you've got your right hand pane. Um, we've got a couple of icons up here. This is our light bulb switches between light mode and dark mode in the web UI. Really like the dark mode, a little easier on the eyes. Uh, it does show you that you're online here as well. And then when we look over in the left-hand pane, uh, you'll see there's a bunch of amplifiers here. The reason that we have all those amplifiers here is because I'm at LEA headquarters. So we've got sales amps, engineering amps, marketing amps, everything that's on our network. And the reason you're seeing those is because we have a self-discovery mode. It's a UDP discovery mode. So I can actually browse through these. And as long as they're not password protected, 
I can go in and click in to, this is my AMP right here. And then you can see it opens up the navigational icons across the top. And so we've designed this uh, web UI so that you're never any more than three clicks away from anywhere. Again, I can't stress the, the uh, importance of simplicity. And we've all used UIs where it's just very complex to try to find, hey, where's this option and that option? Well, we've eliminated that so that you're never any more than three clicks away from anywhere. So at the top here, I want to run everyone through each one of these icons briefly to tell you a little bit more about them. So first is our channel input section. So at the top here, we have our output fader. Where you can see everything's very quick and reactive as I drag that around. I've got some program content just playing here from my computer. I can also go over here. I can mute. So it mutes here as well as down here on the amplifier. And then we do have a primary and a secondary input. So on the primary input, you've got your input fader here. Uh, everything has a routable input matrix. So this is a Connect 704. Uh, so this is a four channel network or analog amplifier. So there's four analog inputs that's associated with each output channel. So I can select and route those to any channel that I need. And then same thing, the secondary input just mirrors the primary. So input fader here. And then I also have the selection to select and route any uh, secondary input. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's say today, uh, we're going, going back to that restaurant bar example, um, they have a paging system for food inside of the restaurant. And so uh, with that paging system, they want to hook that up. So they normally have background music playing continuously. But when the page comes in, they want to be able to everyone to hear that page without the background music. So if that was hooked up to, say, the secondary input on this amp for today's purposes on, on Analog 2, I can select Analog 2 here on the secondary input. And then I would come down here and there's this auto override primary input function. So basically what happens here is anytime the amplifier senses a signal on that secondary input, which would be the paging system, the amplifier will priority override what's playing on the background on, on primary one, which is the background music. They'll make the page and then it reverts back over into the background music once the page is complete. So you can start to see how there's a lot of DSP built into this and, and we're just scratching the surface here on these. Okay, so next up we have our channel settings. And so here you can take, you can name your channels or your zones. You can see I have these named patio and subwoofer. Channels three and four are at the bottom. I can click those. I can also hold control and then zoom out of my mouse wheel and I can see all four channels in the same display window. So you can actually work through these very quickly. Uh, and okay, there was a, a question that popped up. Okay, question comes from Chris, and it was a question about if you can label the inputs. Chris, that's a really good question. Um, so on our amplifiers, you can label the, the outputs or, or the zones. Um, currently, you cannot label the inputs. Um, that, uh, that is something that has been brought up a lot. But uh, yeah, as of currently, you'll just see your, your analog inputs or your Dante inputs if it's a Dante model. It's a great question. Uh, in the future, it might be a possibility. Okay. So from there, what we would do is now you have your high Z and your low Z settings. Uh, so you can go in and you can see right now channel one set to 70 volt. If I want, I can set that over to low Z with the drop down. Channel two set to low Z, probably going to stay there for the sub. Channel three, that's set to 70 volt. Channel four, maybe I want to switch that over to low Z. So you can see how easily and on the fly I'm configuring all of that. So let me zoom back in here um, just because it's a little easier to see the text. So after I get those settings, uh, then I would come down and now I have my smart power bridge. So again, remember with smart power bridge, we have the ability to double the power on one channel without sacrificing another channel. So right now channel four is lit up blue on this amplifier. So I am doubling the power. This is a 700 watt per channel amp. I'm getting 1400 watts out of channel four. So let's say uh, with this bar restaurant, originally your sub was going to be on channel four, but now last minute, you know, they, they came in, they had to do some design changes. Uh, maybe they took out a wall or something like that. Uh, and now this actually has to be moved over into channel two on the amplifier. Well, no problem. All that I do is I go in and I click into channel two. 
Channel two is now engaged. Channel four is disengaged. And that's all it takes. And I'm now doubling the power on channel two. I didn't have to go back and do flip any dip switches or rewire anything. It's all done right here through the software. So it doesn't get much easier. Next up, we have our signal generator menu. And so here you also have the option, you can deploy pink noise, white noise, or even a steady test tone in the amplifiers. The neat thing about the test tone is there's also a frequency bar here. So you can take and grab this and you can do full frequency sweeps as you're, you know, of course, testing out your episode or triad speakers. Uh, or if you wanna hear a specific frequency, you can click here anywhere there's a value and then you could type that in, maybe it's 500 Hertz, hit okay. And then you'll be generating that 500 Hertz signal uh, once you enable that on whatever zone you wanna do that. Okay. So next up is our crossover menu. So here it does look like it gets a lot more complicated, but don't worry, uh, it actually gets even simpler. There's two options here. So one is you can go through, you can set up all this manually if you so choose. So for that, we have uh, you know crossover gain. We have, we have input gain, I should say, plus or minus 15 dB. Now you might be hooking up to a Sonos port. Maybe you need to boost that input gain up just a little bit to keep the signal up. Uh, we have output delay up to 100 milliseconds. Uh, and then we also have high and low pass crossovers. So let's do it the easy way. The easy way is you scroll to the bottom. Here you have your speaker tuning snap. So what I can do to import a tuning, I click on import, and then I go up and I can choose my file. And so we're actually already in the snap one tunings. Um, let me just go back here real quick. So when I go back here, you can see our list of manufacturers. Um, this is probably, I think I downloaded this maybe three or four months ago. So I actually probably need to do an, a new update. So when we go into the snap one to, to answer the question from earlier, um, this is the list of speakers that we currently have. So it's uh, most of your LS SAT series. Uh, I think these are subwoofers uh, here currently. Um, so yeah, so we do still have to add some more uh, and we're, we're always happy to do that as well. And so let's say for today's purposes, uh, we wanna go up and let's just use this top one, the LS SAT 4 70 volt tuning. So I'm going to click on open and then I'm going to click on import and you can see the import succeeded. So I click OK. And now that quickly, you can see that channel one just renamed itself to that SAT4 70 volt tuning. And so what that what just happened there is uh, a variety of things. So one is the amplifier went ahead and set itself over to 70 volt because that's what the tuning is. Uh, you will notice that now there's a high pass filter that's been enabled right here. This is blue. It's a Butterworth 12 dB per octave, and uh, the frequency is set at 70 hertz. It also set up to eight bands of parametric EQ. And then additionally, it set your onboard speaker limiters. So it's done the hard work for you. And it took, what, a couple of seconds to import that tuning. So now you have your base curve. And again, these are the exact tunings from Snap1. And so if you want to, from here, you can go in and you can make small you know, adjustments to the EQ section. Or if you're happy with that, say, uh, say I'm good, I like the way it sounds. Well, then I can progress from this crossover section into the parametric EQ. So here you can see uh, currently there's seven of eight bands that are enabled for EQ. And again, if I wanted to make a fine tune adjustment, maybe on the low end here, I could click this drop down. Here I have frequency, Q factor, and gain settings right there to make that adjustment. So again, let's say I'm happy. I don't need to make those adjustments. And, and these are live adjustments, by the way, If I should I make one. Um, I can go into my speaker limiters. So here we have both an RMS and a peak limiter. So again, these are set directly per uh, Snap-on's tuning specs. So nothing you have to do there to either one of those limiters. So you're not going to overdrive and potentially blow up those speakers. So that then takes me to the last icon. And so one, what we do here is we look at, uh, this is more of the monitoring parameters of the amplifier. Of course, being a smart amp, we monitor many different parameters. So I'm sure a lot of you have probably been wondering through this entire presentation, what are those emojis for that you see over here in the left-hand pane? Well, the emojis are how, how we tell status. So. If you have a smiling amp, you know that if you have, I'm sorry, a smiling emoji, you know you have a happy amp. 
if you have a frown face or a shout face emoji, you know you have a event or a fault inside of the amplifier. So an event is something that's typically not catastrophic. Uh, an example of that would be real-time load monitoring where here you can dial in uh, load impedances limits. And so say you have a speaker that blows up or say you have an open line somewhere because they were taking out a wall and the carpenter took a sawzall down right through the wall and cut through your speaker wires. That would be an example of an open line. So if that happened, you would get a frown face emoji. You could click that or you go up here to your eye icon, go to events and faults. Here we keep a full running timestamp log. So you can see the exact dates, the time, uh, the channel, and then the event that, that it actually occurred. So you know very proactively, hey, you know, I, I see an open line. I'm going to reach out contact them and you can provide and be that expert at a distance and really have that preventative approach before they may even know what's happening with the audio system. Uh, that's just one example. You know, there's, there's various things that we monitor. Um, you know, we monitor AC line voltage and currents, uh, POE, um, amp temperature, um, all sorts of, of course, real-time load monitoring and a variety of other parameters inside and downline of the amplifier. Okay, so additionally too, um, we do have these icons. So um, in the earlier session, you know, there was a question about power. Uh, if I click that, I can actually look at AC line voltage and AC line current in real time. Uh, additionally, you can see this amp, G's amp, this is actually sleeping. So you see the red power icon with the Z's coming out of it. Well, you can put our amps into an auto standby mode. Um, so the question was actually asked, can I turn it off from the software? You can't actually power the amp completely down through the software, but you can put it into the sleep mode so it conserves very little power, draws very little power, excuse me, uh, when it's in auto standby mode. Then we have our network settings. So you have your three ways to connect, Wi-Fi, wired, or that access point. Here's where you can actually click to disable the access point altogether. Uh, and we have a green power menu where you can see real-time power usage. Uh, so that's also nice too to keep that in monitoring. Uh, and then the only other thing that you can do is, of course, lock these down with the password. So then if someone with prying eyes tries to get in there, they're not going to be able to do anything or change any parameters as long as it's password protected. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions so far? I'll go ahead and check the chat here again. And again, feel free if anything didn't make sense or you want me to go back through something, more than happy. I'm thinking this is a very knowledgeable audience, Joey. Awesome. I, I like it. I like it. No, we, we, I, I see one popping up now. You got Drew. Okay. Go ahead. Take Drew's. Okay. Yeah. So, so Drew asked, uh, for basic residential installs, would there be any problems with cooling slash overheating if the amp is installed in the closed media cabinet without any ventilation? Uh, yeah, media cabinet. Okay. Um, so Drew, that's a great question. Uh, as long as, uh, I would say, as long as it's not just completely stuffed in there with, you know, no, no room at all for any type of airflow, you know, meaning that there's, you know, the cabinets right atop and right below it and then compact right in the front and back panel. And our air airflow is front to back. So you do need at least a little bit of spacing just so it can cycle some air. Um, so I guess the answer to that is it depends uh, based on the cabinet, but uh, Usually you're okay as long as you have some airflow in there. I know I probably didn't answer that and you know the the full 100% answer that that you might have been looking for but yeah it kind of it really depends on the cabinet I would say but overall they do a great job of keeping themselves cool. Um, we also have a high range of operating uh, temperatures so I believe we operate from freezing all the way up to 134 degrees Fahrenheit so you know they can take some pretty abusive environments. As a matter of fact, um, we do, so we're, we do most of the six flags currently were the primary solution for them. And those go in um, smaller, you know, smaller outdoor boxes, weather boxes that don't have a whole lot of airflow. And you can imagine how hot it gets at some of those parks, especially in Texas and so forth. Uh, and they do great in those environments. All right, cool. Yeah, no problem, Drew. Okay, so I don't see any others. So uh, what I want to also do is take you through our cloud platform. 
So uh, with the cloud, uh, I'm actually going to pop over here. And uh, again, we use Amazon Web Services or AWS IoT Core as our backend cloud platform. Now, of course, this is a free cloud platform to the integrator. Again, there's no monthly subscription costs. We take care of all the backend costs with AWS. It's also very secure through AWS. So with that, all that they would do is go to leaprofessional.cloud. You would want to register a new account, which you just need an email and a password. Usually what I tell partners is, you know, use a shared email. So, you know, service at snap1.com as an example or whatever, where most of your technicians are going to be able to get logged in. And then the cloud, the reason I show this secondly is because everything that you just saw inside of the web UI is available inside of the cloud. Um, there's only basically one feature that is not. And so with that, uh, as I get logged in, you're going to notice the cloud looks very similar to the web UI. And again, that's because most everything is. Uh, we also have the light bulb up top here, so I can flip it over into dark mode. Again, looks just like the web UI. I'm going to keep the cloud in light mode, though, just for today, so I can show you uh, the differences. And so with that, you'll notice here in the left-hand display pane, we do now have venues instead of amplifiers. So you can see we have Loud Enough Audio HQ. Uh, this, of course, has one amp online, and then it has an emoji to tell status. So whether you have one amp or 2,000 amps in there, that emoji will report status across all of those. And the other great thing is we have this sort function up top. So I can click up here. I can sort by error status. It takes any ven venue with an error. So we got Shark Bite Hospital. I've got a Shout Face emoji. So if I click that emoji, because I want to know what's going on there when I'm doing my daily monitoring, well, it takes me into the amplifier that's having that issue. I can see here, uh, looks like there's been a fan fault as you look through you know, your diagnostic log here. So this is a fan number two fault. So again, I might be across the country. I might be at a different job install. I, I see this and I go ahead and reach out to the end user and let them know, hey, by the way, we see you're having a fan fault. Um, we've already contacted LEA. You know, we may either get a replacement unit sent out or a new fan or whatever. Uh, and so with that, you know, that's being that expert at a distance approach and being very proactive in that for your RMR model, you know, selling a service or maintenance agreement. Uh, same thing too. It looks like there might've been uh, maybe a power outage at some point as well. So I can even see events like that or faults like that. Um, so this really gives you that, that full data that you need without having to roll a tech in a service truck and one of our big advantages to the, the cloud. Now, it also gets even better. So I'm setting up a venue today. It's very simple. You go up here, you click your plus sign. Um, so we're going to call this uh, Snap1 uh, called HQ. I click Add Venue. And then you can see, as I scroll down, I now have Snap1 HQ in my list of venues. So of course, there's no amps in the venue. So what I would do is I would click into the venue. I would go up to this Add Amp button, click on that. And then with AWS, it just generates a one-off security token. So I take and copy the token. I go back into my web UI. I find the AMP that I want to onboard. So I'm going to do my AMP, click this I icon, go up to connect AMP to account, paste the token, click register. And that's all it takes to get it onto AWS. So you can see the connection was a success with the cloud server. So I click OK. From there, I'm going to head back into my web UI. And so you, uh, excuse me, into my cloud. So you can see in the cloud, there's no AMP here yet. That's okay. Um, what's happening is, is it's doing a validation service or validation process where it's doing some handshakes with the server. Once it validates that amplifier, you're going to see it appear here, which it can take up to about 60 seconds for it to do the, the full validation process. And then after it appears, you're able to actually go in and set up, control, monitor, do whatever you need to with that amplifier. So there you go. You can see Joey CS704 is now here in Snap1 HQ. So from there, I just click into the amplifier. And now you can see as we get in here, of course, I've got all my live metering. I've got all of the icons, just like we do inside of the web UI. And these are all, again, two-way communication. So just to show this, I'm going to put the cloud next to the web UI in split screen mode here. So the web UI is over here in dark mode, cloud is in light mode. So let's say today you get a call from the end user and maybe they're having some audio feedback on zone one. 
well, you, all of your techs are tied up uh, on service calls. You can't get anyone out there and it's just annoying them very badly in the restaurant. Well, what you could do to solve that problem real quickly is go in here to the cloud and you click mute on zone one and takes care of that audio feedback that you're having for now. So you can see when I clicked that, it already muted over here in the local connection. So again, two-way communication. And then same thing, the other power of the cloud is you may have a tech on site. The tech may not be as familiar with our software. So you can be in the cloud watching every adjustment that they make. So again, if I were to unmute here locally, you can see it pushes back into the cloud and it's virtually instantaneous. There's very little lag with that. And then of course, as you continue to go through, you know, maybe you wanted to load in a, a speaker tuning from the cloud, same thing. You have your speaker tuning option there. You can import that. Um, you can do everything in the web UI. The only thing you cannot do is here in network settings. So we do grade this out just because if you're hundreds or even thousands of miles away, we don't want you to knock yourself off the network and not be able to put yourself back on. But other than that, that is, um, that's kind of a quick overview of the cloud. Are there any questions on that? Okay. So again, just remember totally free platform, which is great. So with that, um, I've got just a couple of things I wanted to, to, to uh, summarize here in closing. And so again, you know, one of the, the big things is we do build a differentiated product at the end of the day. And I think you've all seen that through, of course, we have APIs to integrate into whatever control platform you might be using. Um, we've also incorporated speaker tunings. We have thousands of speaker tunings. Uh, we will uh, very happily uh, add more uh, based upon any requests that we get. Uh, then we have our cloud. So when you take a look at the remote management side, as we just looked at, you, of course, all know the advantage there. Um, the web UI gives for very quick setup and configuration. Uh, and uh, which we didn't really have time to go through today because uh, it usually takes about 30 minutes or so. But we have our Sharkware software platform. So if you are doing a larger install where you have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 amps, this is a great software. Uh, it's, it's, again, very much the same as the web UI in the cloud in terms of setup, but there's an offline design mode. So you can actually build your racks from the comfort of your home office. You can then set up all of your configuration files and push those files once you get to the job site. So it makes it very seamless. Uh, and there's other functionality like grouping functionality to bring up a series of faders across different zones, user access control to lock out specific parameters and even visual EQ inside of Sharkware. So one thing too, uh, as I jump forward, I, I do wanna mention, you know, we've talked a lot about our feature set, our form factor, uh, our, our smart power bridge functionality and cloud control. And I will say, I mean, that's really what we lead with as a manufacturer. Uh, we haven't talked much about price. I will tell you, we don't lead with price, but price is also not an objectable factor to our products. Uh, in fact, a lot of times, uh, especially when you look at the smart power bridge functionality of our amplifiers, and when you look at your total zones, um, many times you're very priced advantage with our products. Uh, and I will say too, to this, as you look at these competitors, none of these competitors lead with price. Um, but when you look at the overall feature set, and we win hands down, and that's basically what this slide describes. Additionally, too, I'll also point out that we stand behind our products. You know, as a, as a company, that's what we call our LEA way. And so with that, uh, we offer a six-year warranty on all of our products. Uh, how the warranty breaks down is for the first three years out of the box, it's a three-year advanced replacement warranty. If you have any issues, we're going to send out a new unit with a call tag to send the old unit back. And then the remaining three years is free parts and labor with registration. And additionally, on top of that, anytime, if you need any technical assistance, um, you know, any type of application support, maybe a cross-reference guide, we're, we're here. And you know, we, as a, as a company, want to support our partners. And that's you, that's Snap One. So you can go out and do the same thing for your partners. So we stand behind that. That's what we call the LEA way. Uh, we pick up our phones when you call and uh, we're very responsive. So if there's anything that you need, uh, technical support or, you know, just product support or whatever, we're here for you. Uh, and again, we try to try to have some fun with it, but yet be a very simple and easy company to do business with. 
so with that, I'm going to, I'm going to check. I think we just got another question here. Uh, yes. Yes, we did. So questions from Tom and uh, Tom asked, uh, how would you sell two 88 amps uh, for more than four times the price per channel over the episode 16 channel DSP amp to a residential client? Um, we need justification to the client for the uh, exponential price difference when they see that the same functionality on the control four end. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good question, Tom. Um, I think you, you really have to look at, you know, so overall, a lot of the feature set, you know, when you, when you look at to say the, the cloud functionality that's included, you know, for free with our amplifiers, if, if, you know, let's say they weren't using control four. Uh, that is a huge feature right then and there with you look at service calls and how much an average service call costs. You know, even if we send out for one service call uh, or we don't have to, per se, with our cloud platform, I mean, you could save the customer right there several hundred dollars just on a service call like that. So, you know, I think it's just uh, you know, really looking at what their needs are uh, for the products. Also, too, with some of the flexibility um, you know, most most amps, and I believe uh, the episode 16 channel DSP amp, I, I believe you lose a channel as well uh, when you do traditional bridging. So you would actually be gaining uh, two of those channels back, if you will, with our Connect series. So there's certainly some advantages. And, and again, uh, not, to, not to knock at all the episode uh, amplifiers, they're great amplifiers, but, uh, you know, it's client, client to client dependent, I would say, on that. Yeah, thanks for the question, Tom. I know, um, you know, Joey, hey, and great fielding there. I mean, it, it is what it is. And I like my guys are looking at, you know, in terms of what are they going up against? Um, sure, this is a feature set conversation, and it has been for the whole hour. And when you just your slide before this talking about leading with price, etc. There's other prices that are out there. There's other amplifiers obviously that are out there that that come up a lot where it's name brand recognition and you know the the client ultimately wants something in there that's comparable etc so i don't mean to put you in that position where you have to answer the question on that because you know i'm just glad that we've got this solution um worked hard to get this line in tom it's now in the stores and i want to work with you on um identifying key areas and how to sell this and that's a great question i really appreciate both responses there um andrew's got a question bud yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Andrew's question was, uh, will there be an app that allows users to only change input and volume for each zone? That is a great question, Andrew. So um, one of the things I, I very briefly touched on was our, our Sharkware software platform. Um, we actually do currently have that functionality. And let me, so if I jump to this slide right here, uh, I, I, I kind of browsed over that for the sake of time. Um, so Sharkware is currently available for Mac or PC download. And what that does allow you to do is with user access control, um, you can give the end user only, say, volume and mute rights uh, or be able to uh, change one of the inputs on that. And you can lock them out of everything else. Um, just to build on that real quick, too, um, we in the future, you know, this is the backbone with Mac and PC. Uh, that will probably also continue to roll out into Android and iOS at some point. Um, we just launched it this year, so I would I would expect there's going to be a little bit of time before that happens. But uh, we certainly have the backbone in place to continue to to build that out. Absolutely, great question. And I believe we are there. And it's about ten o'clock West Coast. One o'clock East Coast, guys. Um, anything else will stand by, but great participation. And did you know, Joey, that we are live in our San Diego location? I got sent a picture where there we are right now in front of the store, and we are talking to a, an, an audience live in a, in a location. So there you go. Want to thank wow. uh, Cody for setting so that cool. up and and the and the guys. But no, we're we, people will go back to this as you guys know. I recorded this session today, and we. We post them um, in order um, on our YouTube page, so look for that. These things are are definitely great tools, and it's 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 right now. This conversation is today, which is always important because as as you as you know, there's tons of content out there. And it's like I'm just going to go to the latest one because I I want to you know I want the most up to date information. Um, Jeff has another question there, bud. Okay, let's take a look. So Jeff's question was, uh, can you share information on any uh, upcoming releases? I'm interested in the 16 channel 100 watt amp. Uh, that that is another great question, Jeff. So, um, just to share a little bit, kind of on what our product roadmap looks like. Um, so, right now, we just launched our 1504, which is our high-powered amplifier that takes you into the large and extra-large install space. 
Um, we actually are pivoting back. So we're going to the other side, which is the very small form factor uh, half rack space design next. Um, you're probably looking at like a, a 30, 60, 120 watt model, uh, four channel models for those um, stuff that you can fit behind a display, uh, you know, mount pretty much where, wherever, maybe up in a plenum and, and uh, anywhere else that you might throw those things. Um, from there, we're also going to look at some wall controllers, you know, volume, source selection, mute. And then we do have a uh, CDS slash residential style amplifier as well on the roadmap. I'll be honest, that one's a little bit farther down, so I don't have a whole lot of uh, details on that. But uh, I think 16 channels probably going to be pretty promising. I just don't really know a power spec yet on that amplifier. So, yes, uh, it's a great question. And we are certainly... Um, certainly have eyes on that market. Definitely. Nice. Hey, how, what are your CD plans? You're going to be showing as well a couple months away. Yeah, that's a great question. So I will be there. Uh, I'll be at Cedia. Um, I don't think we're going to have a booth this year. Uh, we, of course, we didn't have a booth during the pandemic, but uh, we've, we've since the business has grown so much that next year it, it's looking very good for us to have a booth there. So, but for this year, I'll be, I'll be browsing. And uh, if anyone wants to meet up, uh, just uh, shoot me an email or call or text or whatever, and I'd love to come meet up with you. So I would like to see you in our booth. I will be there. I'll be representing the Snap One Partner Stores. For everybody else, guys, uh, we're going to let you go. Joey, thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. Um, it, up till this point, training um, internally our own staff and then you know, going kind of live with our, our weekly webinar series, product in-house, continuing the training conversation, um, you know, fielding questions like we just got another one and we're going to continue to be here, not only on this platform, but going forward. Um, I always get hit up, you know, weeks out on, on something that you might have referred to. So you and I will keep that communication open. Let's answer this real quick before we shut it down, man. Drew. Absolutely. Yeah. So Drew's question, any idea when the wall control units might become available? Very interested in some physical controls. Um, so yeah, Drew, uh, based on what we're looking at, the, the half rack space amps will probably launch early 2024. Uh, then after that is, is all feet forward for the controllers. So I'm going to guess uh, probably late 2024 for the controllers, uh, as that'll be the next big project for them. So absolutely. Nice. Well, I'm certainly glad about this partnership. LEA, going forward, Snap One Partner Stores. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining the weekly webinar series. We'll be back next week. Joey, I will see you in a, probably a couple months in Denver. And in the meantime, we'll keep the con uh, channels uh, open. I did record this is gonna be in your inbox as well as the slide deck. So um, let's get out there and sell some amps and let's get let's dive into this. And I really wanna get some testimonials back on, on how this first segment of this launch is going. Um, got great support and um, I feel our staff is pretty knowledgeable. So. Um, Let's go, get, let's go get into it. Joey, thank you guys so much. Everybody, thanks for joining me today. Be safe out there. It's hot. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Have a great day.